and I hope that the, the story that goes out actually highlights the legacy that Dr. Jansen will be leaving. As we're looking at our um, centennial and we're moving forward, we're going to be looking at a lot of things that the superintendents have done. And as I said at the close of the meeting, her legacy is going to be that she was a consummate teacher. She continued to teach even as superintendent working with schools. We heard about her love for students. That cannot be denied by anyone. Uh, the ability to reach across state and county lines to bring businesses in to work in cooperation with the district, to bring their resources to our students. Um, that's very, very important. And to make sure that even the, the least fortunate have the same educational opportunities as the most fortunate do with the equity issues that she's moved forward. Um, my goal today was to be able to handle this with as much dignity as possible. And I believe that's exactly what the board did. They came in, they addressed the issue that they had in front of them, did what was best for the district. Um, the, the, the turmoil that has been um, very apparent should cease. And as far as I am concerned, this chapter closes today. And our mission now is to look at how we move forward and who will be the next person to come in and lead the Nellis County School. Take a few questions, please. You know, in a sentence, you said great things about Dr. Jansen, and a lot of people said great things. So, in a sentence, why fire her? Because I believe personally that the turmoil that was surrounding her superintendency prevented her from being able to move forward and do the things that this district needed. And the focus was no longer on our students by external um, groups as well as um, even the board getting sidetracked by that. So in order to move our district forward and focus back on the students, I felt that, that it, it was in the best interest of the district to do so. Any other questions? What has the board learned from this whole experience? I cannot speak to what the whole board has learned. Um, what I personally have learned is that um, we need to have some more processes in place that will um, enable us to work through issues that come before us and um, have the follow through that is necessary and possibly even address things earlier in someone's term than waiting as, uh, as we did in this case. I have a follow-up question. Um, I didn't get, um, you can give this quick, right? Yes, I never got your evaluation because I guess they published it online, but of the other uh, six board members, uh, if you take the eight, the eight sections by the, sep by the uh, six board members, that's 48. And of the 48 components of the evaluation, 24 of them were at meets expectation or above. That's only half. So would you say that she did a half good job? <laughs> that's what those numbers seem to imply. I'd like to straighten out what happened about my evaluation and why I haven't turned it in. I haven't turned it in because it doesn't exist. The process that was in place was for us to um, get the, the instrument, then we were to get the other um, documentation, then we were supposed to meet with the superintendent, have the conversation, com and, and as I do it, we have that conversation, I complete the evaluation, and then I turn it in. My meeting with her was canceled on three different occasions due to some of these kinds of things that were coming up. Therefore, I never had that meeting with her and never completed the evaluation. So that's why I have not turned it in. I have not had that conversation. That seems to be a real key issue here. So she was, she was asked to resign without cause and the entire uh, you know, evaluation process hasn't been completed. She was asked to resign without cause because the board members believed that it is in the best interest of this Which district. Which is based on evaluation. It doesn't have to be if it's okay. without cause. Thank you. Okay. Anybody, any of what else? <coughs> Dr. Jansen? 